pack rats are a rodent and not unlike other rodents they have the potential to carry diseases they can uh, have the plague or they can have there can be stuff in their uh, urine and feces that uh, can cause other ailments uh, uh, is it leptospirosis uh, which can cause kidney damage meningitis and liver failure you know be cautious when handling or uh, hunting or trapping rabbits, rats, squirrels, anything. Wild game can uh, has the potential for diseases. Just be careful. Be aware of that. Now that we've got that all the way. When you're looking to set up a trap for a pack rat, you have to look around for tiny trails under the grass and when you find a concentrated area like right here you can see where it's traveled under this log a lot there's no vegetation no debris under this log it doesn't want to trip when it's running into its hidey hole uh, there's several different places that are looking like this uh, a pack rat is going to stack cactus and twigs and weeds and everything else up around its hole this trap here, what I've done with it, I've uh, I pulled the staple that holds that the catch out, and I drove it into the side so I could tie it down. Uh, you can do that in the bush. You don't have to have a drill bit. You can use your multi-tool to pull the staple and then drive it in on the side, so you don't have to drill a hole in your in your trap. You can use the staple, and it'll hold fine. Anything that you're going to want to tangle with, it gets caught in that trap anyway. Make sure that you set it to where it's free and clear of obstructions for the snap. And do not get your hand in the way. Keep your hands, you know, when you set this trap, set it down gently and do it from the side where the spring is. Don't set it down to where the spring can flip towards you. Because it can roll up and get a piece of you in it. Handle it from the safe side if you will sit and wait stay within earshot of this because it works uh, and as you can see it was quick and it was uh, painless snap it was over with this part here might want to turn away well, there it is Still got bait, could reset it. Um, there's your reference. But uh, if I had a dollar bill, I could show you. This is uh, right at, I believe that's seven inches long. So that's your. Size reference. Y'all gonna have to wait. I'm not gonna cook this young lady tonight, but we do have to get all the yuckies out. So y'all bear with me. You need a knife. It doesn't have to be much. It's just a little. Uh, I believe this is an Uncle Henry limited edition. We can do the whole survival thing and try to keep the hide on it. But being how we ain't starving, we don't worry about that too much. Not going to try to tan the hide. So you pretty much, we're pretty much going to do the same thing we would do if it was a uh, a rabbit. Just behind the the, the shoulders, right here. And we're just 
just going to tear it and then pull the hide off. So you're going to tear it. Sorry I have to do this on these videos, but uh, every time I put one up, show me processes an animal, YouTube pulls it down or demonetizes it and buries it, and nobody gets to see it anyway. Um, so I put them up on Patreon with an unedited version. Uh, it's, I do it Patreon only for a couple of weeks, and then I open it to the public view. So uh, that's the best I can do for you guys. You know, if it was up to me, I'd have showed you the whole mess. It's really not that bad. It's getting it's getting your food ready to eat. That's all it is. But the policies don't allow for this kind of content on YouTube. Coffee, bacon, grocery store, groceries. I'm naked. Come on, my Kitchen utensil. This is a legitimate meal. This is this is going to be my breakfast. This is how I'm starting the day. Sun's not up real good yet. And I am out here on the wood burning stove fixing to fry up some bacon so I can fry up a rat. So yeah, that's pretty simple. The rat, after I get the bacon, get some grease and I'll uh, debating on whether or not to cut the rat up into more manageable pieces so it'll fry easier. Um, you know, I've stuck squirrels and rabbits and stuff like that, which is the same thing on a fire, and roasted them. Uh, I can tell you this that when you're doing stuff, like uh, when you're roasting your rodent on a fire, if at all possible, if you can uh, find a way to scald it or singe it and leave the hair on, it comes out better. Because, uh, or not, you get the hair off, leave the skin on. Rabbits are kind of hard because their skin's real thin. Uh, squirrels and rats aren't as hard. They, uh, what's the right word for it? Uh, They've got more skin. They've got thicker skin than a rabbit does. It's almost like a, a rabbits were designed to be eaten. I think there may be a lot of truth. You want to? You want me to leave it running? You want to watch the bacon fry? You want to imagine that you're standing out here with me and you're having a conversation about, uh, you know, the. Canadian that got the death sentence because China got caught with her hand in the cookie jar in Canada and um, such as that or we can talk about the fact that it's supposed to be mostly sunny out there and it's going to be a cloudy day I guess we can talk about that it's real bright in here because I got my big bright work light on Ooh, look, I found a knife. Super clean. As far as I know, the last thing I did with this was 
gut something. How do y'all like y'all's bacon? Comment below. Uh, me personally, uh, I like my bacon nearly raw. But I very seldom have ever eat it that way because I don't want to upset the delicate balance around my house about food. That's really good thick bacon too, by the way. Smells horrible. But that makes y'all feel any better about not having bacon and me having bacon. That works really well. I can get the standard over there, and I don't know what it is. It's a little scary because I've got polyurethane and everything else on that shelf over there. I don't need this stuff boinking and boinking and boinking and drying out. I, I've been working on my hat a little. Don't quit. Pretty slow, huh? Thought you did. Thought you did. Ah! Need some better weather, guys. I gotta get, get that side and put on. I'm gonna work on it today, whether it's raining or not, so. Man, how do you like that? How I can do the ooh, crappy lighting, better lighting, crappy lighting. How do you like that? That's pretty cool. Huh? Still not a cinematographer. Okay, I brought y'all back because, well, it's my rat, it's my breakfast, and I never had chicken fried rat before or country fried rat, so. I'm going to batter the wrap and fry it. That's what I'm going to do. Flipping this bacon without letting y'all watch. Bad cinematographer. If like five or six people could comment about the bad camera angle or something, I'd really appreciate that. Um, you know, I know it's your expertise while you're sitting down on the couch is like really high and extreme and stuff. And, yeah. I like doing this for y'all. But uh, <coughs> I'm not going to do 20 or 40 different camera angles and stuff to come out with the best one. I set the camera where it fit. And here we see bacon slowly cooking in its own grease, growing crisper by the second. The tiny bubbles of gas escaping. Allowing the deliciousness to flow. Yes, that's bacon bathing in its own fat. Look at it bubble and wiggle. Imagine the smell. Mmm, bacon. And today on Cooking with Wes, we have a rat 
that we're going to try to bread. We're going to use a little bit of finely, where's the camera? Finely ground wheat product, aka flour. We have ground mustard. Camera, where's the camera? Ground mustard powder. Where's that? Where's that? Why is that upside down? Oh, wait, it's because my computer found it upside down. Don't worry about it. The ground mustard, the cayenne pepper, and the standard iodized table salt. Yes, that sounds a little different because I want to do something different. We're going to put a little salt, just a little salt, which, well, okay, we'll put a lot of salt. Then we're going to take the cayenne pepper. We are going to carefully measure it because cayenne pepper could be very bad. Then we're going to put the cayenne pepper. Get that off my hand. Then we're going to take the mustard. Ooh. We're going to take the mustard top, which actually adds a really cool flavor to just about anything you put it in. I put it in my sausage. Just FYI. And then we mix it up. You get a sterile kitchen utensil and just stir up the mix. And yes. I don't got no black powder or pepper, black powder. I don't put black powder in. I have no black pepper for this. Now then, should we section? Oh, hold on, bacon burning. Should we section it and fry it? I think we should. I think we should take. Perhaps and cut it here. Mostly just for graphic effect. Um, and pretend it's a rabbit. And we'll cut it. We'll it's these little rib cages right there. We'll, uh, Cut the bacon off, the belly meat. Oops. Just rip. And we'll cut it right. Oh, oh. This is so barbaric. Pull the rat. Can't do nothing. You want to leave the tail on for effect? Let's do it for the sake of cinematic excellence. We will leave the tail on and then we will sprinkle it with our flour rub it in all get all everything nicely covered with just I mean this finely ground wheat product Everything's got just a little bit of flour on it. Do the same thing to this other part of the little animal because we don't want it to feel naked while it's being cooked in flaming hot melted body fluid and stuff. I may not let y'all hear all that because it's kind of... Okay, yeah. This is me in the morning. This is cooking with Wes in the morning. Whatever you do, make sure that you leave your cooking utensil laying under the flour when you're doing all that so that you get it all nice and crusted up with Find the ground wheat product. All right. I'll be ready for this. Mm. There we have the beginnings 
of country fried rat. Cooking. That's the bacon grease infiltrating the rat and putting its bacony goodness in our little pack rat friend right there. Who shall steal no more chicken feed? Yeah, that's a corn fed rat. Mmm, corn fed rat. Fried in bacon grease. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Other bacon substitute. I just brought y'all back to point something out. See the tail? It's not cooking. It's like sticking up out of the grease. We're gonna have to do something about that. I'm not eating that unless it's all cooked. Even that little tiny tippy tip of that tail right there. The same. Y'all weren't locked in place. Let me fix that real quick. Here we go. It's actually got some kind of like a sweet smell going on. I think I need to go get something to cover that and hold some of the heat in. Yeah, I don't tell Mrs. S I was up in there stealing stuff out of her kitchen. Yeah, I don't tell her she won't never know. I don't think she watches my videos. Gonna find out anyway. Y'all almost missed this. Just, just then. That's the sound of cooking rat. Give some heat on that tail now. Smells good. You see? May go to farming rat. This video is going to be a splicing nightmare. Hey, uh, I gotta ask y'all a favor. Would one of y'all take out your phone and uh, Google? Uh, cook time for rat. I mean, how do we know when it's all the way done? Uh, me personally, I can't find anything on the internet. So, uh, yeah. See, now's when you need grandkids. Hey, eat this. <laughs> Wow. 
on the cooking timer or whatever, the popping and sizzling and hissing and stuff is indication of the water content and the cold water hitting the grease will cause the sizzling popping whatever. You don't want to cook all the moisture out but you want to replace the water that's in the animal with the hot grease basically that's the, the frying part of it um, when it's done sizzling it's cooked all the way through I was just playing around with that other making my grandkids eat it thing. can you hear it? it's nearly done sizzling I believe it's ready I'm not a barbarian and I do actually eat semi normal food. Is kale. Yes, it's kale. I'm going to eat kale, which is like a vegetable, leafy, green thing. There's no breakfast without toast. By toast, I basically mean dried bread. I don't like it real. Somebody put that on the fire. Here we go. Uh, on my plate I have toast. And toast, uh, fried kale, bacon, and a wrap. Look forward to this kick. 
kill. That's good. You should try kale. But that's not what you're here for. You're here for the rat. Southern fried or country fried rat. Pulls apart nicely. Let's try this bacon. It tastes just like fried rabbit, man. I mean, if I didn't know what this was, if you cut the tail off of it and brought it to me, I would just think you were feeding me a baby rabbit. Got your bones up. So be careful. This is good. Crispy on the outside. Not real too, I thought it was going to be chewier in there. But, um, yeah. There's probably going to be like some educational words and talking at the front of this whole video. If you didn't pay attention to them, go back. Because with any wild game, there are risks involved. And when there's a risk involved, there's precautions you should take. Um, this specifically is a pack rat. It's not a regular black rat or gutter rat or whatever. Um, that's going to be number next. I just got to find me a place to find one. You know, that rat's there every bit as good as this bacon is. I know that sounds like heresy, but that rat is good. It's delicious. Um, see some up front. Maybe it's different meat. This is the same. This is flipping good, guys. Goes a long way to explain it. Why uh, cats will chase a rat before they chase a bird. I mean, this is gonna sound harsh, but this is better than dove. This is, I mean. Rat or dove, right now, if I had to choose knowing what this rat tastes like and what dove tastes like, I would choose the rat. And I like dove. This is delicious. It's a little hard to eat. Dove's easier to eat. But if all you ever do in life is the easy stuff, then, uh, you're not really going to get anywhere, are you? Easy is not always the most fun. Is that simple? You know, after that, I'm going to die. I'm eating my breakfast. You know, just like 
like, share, subscribe. Uh, get out, enjoy your life. Learn new things. Cocktail. Really good. It's good for you. Bacon ain't gonna kill you.